Kawan tu ha, bibijuan tu lang. Nandun sila sa gitna o. Kaya nga eh. Lamas is about to start. Let this mass be an occasion for all of us to look at this. 
is a very important aspect of our Christian lives, our authenticity and interiority. Our Holy Eucharistic celebration is a sacred privilege presided over by His Grace, the Most Reverend Charles John Brown Didi, the Papal Nuncio to the Philippines, alongside our esteemed guest priest and alumni priest as John celebrates. Together, let us enter into this time of worship with reverence, seeking to deepen our understanding of authenticity and an interiority in our Christian lives. With hearts lifted in devotion, let us now rise and join in the singing of our entrance hymn.
in my capacity as the Secretary of the Archbishop of Cebu and a proud alumnus of this federal institution and a relation blessed the young man here. I welcome you, His Grace the Most Reverend Charles Brown, the Apostolic Nusha of the Philippines, in our home, the Sisters of Mary School.
says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil to me, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was hurt because of his reverence. Son though he was, Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Word of the Lord. Jesus answered and said, 
This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will throw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would have. The Gospel of the Lord. Exact 
words of Jesus that all of us have heard in today's gospel. Those words of Jesus that we just heard and read today, they were in the mind of Father Adam in his life when he was suffering. Those words, Amen, Amen, Jesus says, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. And here's what Father Al said the last week before he died in 1992. He was only 61 years old. I'm going to quote his meditation. My role now in suffering very, very much is more and more similar to that of Jesus on the cross. My productive hour is over. I can hardly talk. I can no longer preach. I have difficulty doing anything. So my role is simply to offer my prayer and my pain with Jesus to the Father. And this, I think, will be of more benefit to my children. My children, he's writing about my children, his children, 1992, who are those children? It's you, boys and boys now, girls and girls now. He was thinking about you as he was dying. And this, I think, will be a more benefit to my children and my sisters and my brothers and all my planning and projects and programs. For this, my suffering, he said, is a supreme test in the ultimate act of faith and love. Father Al said, I believe that suffering is redemptive. Pain is salvific, and death and humiliation are fruitful and productive. St. Paul writes about the shedding of blood, there is no work of salvation. And then, Father Al quoted the gospel that all of us heard this morning. In the gospel, Jesus says, unless a great grief falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. If it dies, it bears much fruit. So Father Al continued, I believe that this suffering, this humiliation, or pain, I endure is purposeful, it is fruitful and productive. The blood of Jesus is not enough to redeem the world. He loves us so much, he wants us to participate in the greatest, most satisfying, fulfilling work imaginable, which is the salvation of souls. So Father Al was quoting the gospel that we heard this morning, talking about a grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies, and then becomes so productive, so fruitful. Think about the fruitfulness of Father Al's life. The Sisters of Mary today consist of more than 400 sisters who are all operating charitable, pro charitable programs in the Philippines, South Korea, Mexico, Guatemala, Brazil, Honduras, and recently in Tanzania and Africa. The beginnings of these Sisters of Mary were very small, but they began with the dedication and the devotion and the sanctity of Mother Al. There was a small grain of wheat which has now blossomed in an amazing harvest which we see in the church this morning in this wonderful assembly of all of you, the boys of boys now. How beautiful that is. And that's what we give thanks to God for the gift of Father Al, the fruit of his sacrifice. Boys down and girls down all over the world. A small seed that became something great. A small seed that was so tiny became something unbelievably wonderful. And that's the way nature works, right? You plant a small seed in the ground, a seed as small as your fingernail. And then if we wait for 50 years, we see a gigantic tree, big trees, a transformation, growth, a seed becoming something great. Change and transformation are about, are what we are about as Catholics. We want to be changed. Change and transformation is part of our life. And we change because of God. With God, all things are possible. Remember when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, the young girl living in Nazareth, and told her that she would be the mother of God. Mary was confused. She couldn't understand, how could this be, because I'm not married. And the angel told her, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Let's remember those words, boys, this morning. Nothing is impossible with God. With God, all things are 
gospel. So this idea of change, transformation, something small becoming something great. When we read the gospels, when we go to Mass, we hear stories of Jesus' life. Many of them are about change, about transformation. Blind people who then are able to see. What a transformation. Paralyzed people that then become, are able to walk. What a change. Deaf people who then can hear. Mute people who can't speak, then can speak. The gospel of Jesus is about change, about transformation. And that's what Boys Town also is all about. Boys Town is a place where you can and should change. Where you can and should change. You change physically. You come in your first year in the ninth grade, you're a small guy and wearing a white shirt. Then after four years, you're a big guy wearing a blue shirt. Big transformation physically, right? That will happen to you. A physical transformation, which is fantastic. But our physical transformation is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the transformation of our mind and our heart. That's what needs to change at Boys Town. There are two rules that we need to keep in mind for allowing God to change us here at Boys Town or at Girls Town. Here at Girls Town. First is we need to listen. We need to listen. We have open ears. The gospel talks about people who couldn't hear. They were deaf. And Jesus allowed them to hear. That's a symbol. It's an image. It's kind of an example for us. We're not so good at hearing. We need to listen. What do we mean? What do I mean when we need to listen? We need to listen to the people who are hearing voice now to help us be transformed, to help us change, to help us grow. We need to have our ears open to the sisters, to the teachers, to the staff, to the older boys, to show us what we need to do. Because on our own, we don't know the way. We need someone to show us and, to, and for us to receive that information, we need to listen. We need to be open. Help me to learn. Help me to be open. Help me to pay attention to what people are telling me so that I can really benefit that I can draw all the advantages that I can possibly draw from being here at Boy Scout is an incredible privilege. How many boys want to come to Boy Scout? How many are making application every year? And few are chosen, like you. So take advantage of this by being open, listening, being open to the instruction, the example that you're being given, whether it's your studies, whether it's your spiritual life, whether it's in sports. We need to listen. We need to be open. If we close our ears and don't pay attention, then we don't benefit. We're like a seed that's in the ground that never germinates, that never actually blossoms. We just remain like a little seed. But if we're open to people instructing us, showing us, teaching us, then we begin to grow. We begin to realize the potential that God has given us. That's the first thing to listen for. The second thing is perseverance. It's a difficult word to persevere in English. It doesn't mean to persevere. It means to continue to keep going, to practice again and again. Keep practicing. Keep persevering. Keep continuing, even when you're discouraged. Because there'll be moments when you're like, this is discouraging. I can't do whatever it is. Maybe you're trying to learn to play basketball or something like that, and you're not doing too well. Think, I'm going to quit this. To do something else. No, you need to persevere, continue. If you continue, then God is able to work with you, and all things become possible. Perseverance. There was a famous Spanish violinist. We see some wonderful musicians here. Violinist. He's very famous, and people will say he's a genius. He has a gift from God. That's why he's such a great violinist. He said, "I practice 14 hours a day." More than 30 years. That's why I'm a great violinist. I practice 14 hours a day for more than 30 years. I'm not a genius. I just practice a lot. That's true for all of us. Whatever you want to do, whether it's our studies, our sports, our prayer life, we need to persevere. We need to be consistent. If we do that, we will grow. 
We need to avoid discouragement. Remember that English saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. At first you don't succeed, try, try again. Because if we don't succeed at the first time, somebody says, well, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm discouraged. No. Keep going. Keep persevering. And all things become possible. So those two things I want to tell you this morning, boys. To listen, that means be open to what people are telling you. Your sisters, sisters, teachers, your boys. Listen. So you can absorb their experience to help you to grow so that you as a small seed will grow into a beautiful creature of God. And second, to persevere, that means to continue, even when it's a little bit different. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trying. Even when you fail, there's nobody who achieved something great who didn't fail along the way. Everyone who does something great has failed. But they kept on, right? They kept on. They persevered. That's the message. You have a beautiful gift here of being part of Voice Now. I'm so happy to be with these priests who are alumni of Voice Now. In fact, one of your priests, one of your graduates, Father Raymond Overdon, who graduated here in the seventh batch, works with me in the embassy in Manila. Working for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, here in Manila, a very important position in the Apostolic Institute. That means the embassy, the office of Pope Francis here in Manila. He was like you guys. He was a boy in a white shirt in ninth grade at one point. And now he's a priest working in the Apostolic Institute. So many success stories have come from boys and men. So remember to keep your spiritual life alive. Remember the most important thing is to be close to God. If we're going to really be transformed, it's God who transforms us. So living the life of grace, going to confession, receiving Jesus in the Holy Sacrament of the Eucharist, that's what will give us the power to change. That's what will give us the power to keep our ears open, to listen, and to persevere. We do all of these things always knowing that Mama Mary, our lady, loves us so much. She's given you the gift of a voice down here. She's our mother in heaven. Father Al loved her very much, and I'm sure she loved Father Al very, very much. So on this anniversary of Father Al's departure from this world, we say thank you, God, for the gift of Father Al. Thank you, God, for the gift of sisters of Mary. Thank you, God, for the gift of Joyce Down and Girls Down. May God bless you.
gathered together to celebrate Christ's love unto death for all of us, let us submit to him the needs and intentions of all mankind. Our response will be, Lord Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear us. For all the members of the church scattered throughout the world, may they be credible witnesses of the Father's love for every human being. Let us pray. Lord, hear us. For the Holy Father, our bishop, and parish priests, may they bravely persevere in their service, even in the face of disappointments and difficulties of all sorts. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For those who are undergoing persecution for the sake of the kingdom, may they remain faithful to their commitment to what is right and just. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, hear us. For social workers and all those involved in public service, may they feel the support of the rest of the community in their efforts to form a better society. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For those among us who are discouraged or afflicted in whatever way, may they unite their sufferings to those of our crucified Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. That all those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world, may inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For our students, staffs, graduates, and their own families, that they may continue to bear witness in the practice of moral virtues of simplicity, charity, gratitude, and joy. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For our benefactors and friends, that God may continue to bless them with good health and find true happiness in helping those in need. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For young people, that they may encounter Christ as the meaning and inspiration of their lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For the church, may raise our Father, Father, Venerable Alicia Schwartz, to the altar of saints in his own good time. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. For all our beloved departed who have gone ahead of us, and all the souls in purgatory, may be made worthy of the crown of righteousness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, hear us. Lord Jesus, grant us the strength and the faith that we need to endure all trials in union with you till the end of our lives. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so of all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. No. 
mystery of
with the rest of the Lord, being praised from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now we have a prayer for Venerable Owls of the Edification. Almighty ever living God, give us our obedience. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and the coming day of the year. And now we will have the blessing of religious articles that perhaps you have brought to receive this special blessing. The grace, the mercy, and the peace of God the Father and the Lord and the Holy Spirit will be with you all. The symbols of religious devotion that you have brought to be blessed this morning express your faith in various ways. They serve to bring to mind our Lord Jesus Christ's great love for us and to increase our confidence in the power of Mary, his mother, and all the saints in heaven to help us. Whenever, therefore, we call down God's blessing on religious objects, our foremost concern will be that our Christian lives bear out the kind of witness we give by using them. And now the blessing. Blessed be your name, O Lord, for you are the fount and source of every blessing, and you look with delight upon the devout practices of the faithful. Draw near, we pray, to these your servants, and as they use these symbols of their faith and devotion, grant that they may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Christ your Son, who gives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. The joyous and blessed Lord of Dimitri Nabucco. Today, we shall witness the great, great Ford Infection Sermon. The Board of Trustees of the Olympic and the Sisters of Paris School of the We are to prove with us, we have prepared to meet us today, to raise to the witness the blessed nations of this grace, the most reverential and daily. Now, Father Luigi, to the Pope, our very well-known priest, 
our generous and kind donors, benefactors and friends, the sisters of Gary Community, headed by our Paris General, Sister Maria Chong. Our alumni advisor, Sister Teresita Yadavadati Kazel, the very kind and supportive local superiors of the Vita India and Italia campus, Sister Eva Rico Kazel, Sister Linda Sikaya Kazel. We would like also to welcome all of our atoms and friends. Welcome. At this moment, we are now going to begin the induction ceremony. We would like to call our esteemed Board of Trustees to be informed as you are. Sister Teresita Yapodante Yasen, ASM Design Advisor, Verdi G. Estrada Chair, Annie Kim Kina, Secretary, President, ASM Design Committee Branch, R. Victor Nicholson Sipia, Treasurer, President, ASM Design Civil Branch, Rami Y. Ikkil, PRO Civil. Sherry, Jack Tumanga, PRO Committee. Myron, Dean of the Law, BOT, President, ASMSI International Branch. Alexander Flores, BOT, Edwin Cabrera, CPA. Attorney Kilby, I can see. Virgilio Margiani, Jr. Attorney Albert B. Wild. Darrow, Fred Bowles. The Police Major, Estonian Team of Travel. Major Rick Ivan Tolden, put in the car. To start the interaction, may I call our alumni advisor, Sister Rosita Yafrodati Kazari, and our vicarious chair, Sister Marie Chow Kazari, Sister Rosita, who conduct the off-taking of the ASMSI Board of Trustees. The Brussels of Sister Maria Chow.
forgive them all their mistakes and selfish tendencies, and help them prepare by their good deeds for an eternal union with you, through Christ our Lord.
Major General Wesley, the Vicarious General, and the Sisters of Various Children, to be informed for her message of thanks to him for this blessed celebration.
Thanks be to God. 